Hello, I'm Carol Wilson. I'm the author of The New Stone Age. And I am here with Jess Diner, the beauty director of British Vogue. Because I work in the Vogue office, I know she's a crystal woman because I pass her desk every day and I see her little box of crystals, which is there on her desk, which actually appears in the book. So I'm really pleased to introduce her to you and ask her what her daily crystal regime is and when she started with them. Thank you very much for having me, Carol. Yes, I can attest to being a bit of um, a crystal worshipper. And actually that's one of the things of working from home is that lovely little trinket box on my desk is still on my desk and I have not been able to retrieve it and bring it home. So I'm definitely missing a few key items in my repertoire, but very much looking forward to talking about it all with you. So do you have a daily crystal regime, Jess? And when did that start? So I think more than having a regime, it's just more that crystals are kind of infused in the everyday. So rather than having like strict things that I like to do with crystals, it's more that they just happen to be all around me. So I have a massive chunk of rose quartz on my bedside table. It's kind of the first thing I see when I wake up or the last thing I see when I go to sleep, apart from my phone, which is terrible. Um, and then, you know, I've got slices of agate in my living room. I'm looking at them right now. Um, I've got crystals in my kids' rooms. I do, I do a beauty routine with my crystal tools. So it's kind of, they're all around me. They're in little bowls around the house. I wear them on my person. Um, so it's just kind of, for years now, been something that is very much integrated into my life. And it's just kind of come about quite naturally. So how important are crystals in beauty and wellness? Well, I think just by their very nature, the fact that they're healing and soothing, it, it didn't take the beauty industry very long to kind of um, capitalize on that. But I would say it's probably only very recently that they've become quite mainstream. So if you go onto any big beauty retailer now, you can buy a jade roller or a rose quartz um, sculpting tool. And I know it's something that you and I have talked about, that it's um, very much become part of like the beauty lexicon, but it's definitely something that previously, it was kind of a bit hippy dippy. It's always been there, but you kind of had to be very much looking out for it, or it had to be something that was a personal interest that you kind of looked for in your beauty choices. Um, so it's definitely been something that I've always been very in tune with. And you know, if I see a product has got, you know, like pearl, crushed pearls in it, or, or um, even there's, I, there's some eye products that I love that have a rose quartz rollable. You know, those are all the things that I kind of am always very drawn towards. Um, and I think the beauty and wellness world has kind of taken it and run with it because it's something that everyone's kind of looking for now. They're looking for all these alternative means to complement their life. And I think, you know, crystals very much do that. Do you think they can really help your skin? Oh, yes, definitely. A hundred percent. I mean, it's so much more than that because it's it's that whole thing of outside inside beauty. So it does help. It's got you know topical properties that it can heal and soothe. But I also think it's what's going on on the inside as well. That um, that's kind of where the magic happens. Um, but yeah, I'm probably I'm probably like a bit more on the hippie side than the technical side. But I just I just have it. They just resonate with me. If you could give a crystal to anyone, who would that be and why? Boris Johnson needs some crystals in his life right now because it's just a really tough time. Um, and I thought he needs a bit of Celestine just for some mental clarity, just some divine provenance to kind of maybe help him because it's just, there's a lot of confusion with what's going on in the world right now. And then what else did I think? Oh, maybe some lapis lazuli just for some, Serenity, a bit of calm, probably is quite stressful for him at the moment. Um, so yeah, I think it's probably not something that he has in his toolbox currently. So I thought that maybe he could do so. Are you road testing any crystal product at the moment? And when you do, how do you test their efficacy? Um, yeah, I think there's something about crystals that a lot of it is intuitive. 
So, you know, my husband, for example, it's not really his vibe. And, but his standpoint is very much like, you know, even if it's just, um, it, you know, even if it's not tangibly making any difference, what's the harm? But I am road testing, actually, I've got one here, um, Amber with my baby. So Amber's meant to be really good for teething babies. So we've got this, um, we've got a couple actually because they keep rolling off, but we've got this around his ankle. Um, and I just kind of feel like, even if it doesn't work, what's the harm in using it? But, and I'm not just saying this, but since he has been wearing this, he's been a lot less grizzly, a lot less grouchy. He's still teething, but to my mind, it's working, it's magic. My husband might say differently, but I think it's working. <laughs> Probably depends what time of the day he's crying. Yes, exactly. Yeah, if it's 3 a.m. and he'll be like, why is the amber not working? Um, any tips for choosing and using a crystal stone roller? Um, well, I mean, there's lots on the market at the moment. So um, it kind of depends on what you're after. So um, again, I came prepared with my props because I love, I mean, I've got quite a few actually. But um, this is amethyst. So amethyst is really good if you've got acne, um, very good kind of healing and soothing. I mean, they're all soothing by nature in the fact that they're cold and they're crystals. Um, so they're gonna immediately feel amazing on the skin, but um, amethyst is specifically very good for acne. So I tend to use that on the jawline um, and on the cheeks because that's kind of where I suffer the most. Then you've got your jade. So this is kind of probably the most classic tool that everyone kind of knows about jade roller. Amazing for deep puffing under the eyes, um, soothing. They're just really good at, I feel like I'm on an infomercial for QVC. <laughs> just, um, they're really good at working product into the skin. So um, what I would often do is I'll apply my face cream or my oil just before bedtime and then I'll get into bed and then I'll kind of roll away um, but what I don't do but what a lot of people do do actually to enhance the kind of cooling and soothing is to keep them in the fridge and then just before you use them you take them out of the fridge and then you're going to kind of get an added boost and it's just amazing for circulation um, and then you've also got this is my rose quartz sculptor so this is really good for massage um, and the fact it's made from rose quartz just means again it's just very calming um, and very healing. So um, this is one that I kind of really use to get in and ease out tension, um, lymphatic drainage. And yeah, just by the nature that they're made from crystal, they're just immediately soothing on the skin. So um, but that's kind of my trio of sculpting tools there. So you just choose what stone attracts you really? Yeah, or, or what I feel like I need. But I think a lot with crystals, there's, it's so much of having them in front of you and just picking up what immediately talk, speaks to you. Um, even, you know, often when I've gone into a shop, a crystal shop, like I won't know what something is for or what its significance is or its meaning. You could just kind of get immediately drawn to something and then you'll be like, oh, actually, I do really need that in my life right now. And it's funny how that, that kind of, that conversation between you and the stones comes about. Oh, I really sound like a hippie now. <laughs> Conversation of you and the stones. But I really, I believe it. So now I want to know what your desert island crystal is. That if all your stones were being swept out to sea, which one would you wade in to rescue? Because you couldn't live without it. If I could only choose one, or maybe could I choose two? Okay. I'll <laughs> let you ask this. I've got two, I've got two hands. So... Um, the first one that I would choose, which is one that I know that we've spoken about, is um, when I got married, I had a rose quartz in my bra. Um, obviously, rose quartz is kind of like the love stone, but it's also um, very calming. So I had that in my bra when I got married, so it's got very big significance to me. Um, and then in both of my births, I had um, smoky quartz in my bra. So that's really good for that kind of like jittery anxiety that you might um, find when you're going into labor. And um, so I would, I would choose those, my, my wedding quartz and my labor quartz. 
So do these crystals have a memory for you? Yeah, they definitely, they kind they're also on my bedside and they kind of, they kind of retain the energy of the days that they were present. So um, I kind of feel like they're very special in that sense. Whereas normally you kind of want to wash your crystals and renew that energy. Those are the ones that I just want to not touch and just keep as is because they kind of have absorbed the magic of those, those very special days.